Hey there, future data scientists and tech enthusiasts, I welcome you all. If you have ever wondered how Netflix knows what shows you might like, or if you want to know how self-driving cars or autonomous car works, then you are at the right place. Hello everyone and welcome back to another interesting video by Edureka on machine learning for beginners. Before we begin, please like, share and subscribe. Remember to hit the bell icon to stay updated on the latest tech content on the Edureka's YouTube channel. Also, check out the Edureka's machine learning certification course, the link to which is in the description below. So guys, let's see what we are going to explore today. So today we are going to explore real world examples of machine learning, starting your journey, how you can start your journey to machine learning and key concepts and impacts of machine learning in your day to day life. So guys, to help you navigate through this video, here is a quick rundown for you guys. Table of contents. What is machine learning? How does machine learning works? Five features of machine learning, types of machine learning, what skills one should have to learn machine learning, machine learning applications, and last but not the least guys, that is future of machine learning. So guys, I'm going to amaze you with this best example of Google Translator and AI which converts from one language to the another. I have chosen one language for you guys since many of you watch animes and all. So I'm going to convert from Japanese language to the English language. Buckle up, let's get started. So guys, I'm going to write a word in Japanese that is Ohayo gozaimasu. If you know what Ohayo gozaimasu means, then please comment down below. So I'm going to convert Ohayo gozaimasu from Japanese to English. So let's copy this and paste this in here. So Ohayo gozaimasu in Japanese, but in English it means good morning. A Google translator works on a neural network and a neural network is a machine learning algorithm which learns from Japanese language, keeps on improving itself and gives you the optimal output that is good morning in English. This is how a language translator works. Let's see one more example. If I write here one more thing that is Hajime Mashte. Hajime Mashte in Japanese, if you know, then please comment down below. Let me see what does it mean. So, Hajime Mashte in Japanese, but in English it means nice to meet you. Here also the same. The neural network is learning from Japanese language and showing you what does it mean in English language. So, let me properly explain you what it actually does. So, guys, a translator is nothing but it's an AI machine that converts from one language to the another using a machine learning algorithm called neural network. Now, what neural network does is it learns from one language, makes a mistake or errors, then keeps on improving itself so that it can convert to another language such as from Japanese to English or from English to Japanese. So guys, the translator which you are using works on neural networks and this is how a translation works. So guys, you must be thinking then what is machine learning? So moving on to what is machine learning we have. A machine learning is nothing but a training from historical data or experiences or in layman terms you can say learning from data to predict future or required output is called machine learning. Guys, a simple machine learning algorithm works in a way that you have a data of any kind and you give it to a machine. Now what does machine does is it learns from it in different ways using some different algorithms and gives you the required amount of future or predicts the required amount of output you wanted. Now guys, you must have understood what is machine learning. Let's deep dive a bit. Let's see what are the features of machine learning. We have five features of machine learning that is predictive modeling, automation, scalability, generalization and adaptiveness. These are the five main features of any machine learning. So guys, tighten your seat belts. Let's move to these one by one. Predictive model. In the predictive model, what it does is it uses some mathematical functions and statistical techniques on the historical data and gives you the future predictions. The best example I can give you guys is the stock market prediction app where it uses some graphs, straight line graphs and charts to show you the prediction based on the historical data using some statistical and mathematical functions. This is how a predictive model works. Moving on to our next topic that is automation. Automation is one of the best feature to save money. You know why? Because the companies which are having the less domains and cannot hire the employees, 
they can automate different machines to do the same work as the employee does such as if you want a developer but you don't have the cost to pay then you can automate a machine that can develop for you this is the best example i can give you for the automation feature so guys moving on to our next feature that is scalability scalability has its own importance because a machine learning algorithm if it is not scalable then it cannot handle larger amount of data sets or bigger data sets i can give you the best example that is amazon so guys here i am at the amazon website and you can see a lot of product and not only you can see but whole world can see who are using amazon app now this system is a scalable system no matter how many customers are here and they are buying the system will never crash it can handle that amount of larger data sets so this is the best example of a scalable system so guys moving on to our next feature that is generalization in generalization what it does is it's the ability of the model to generalize things to forecast new data suppose your model is trained on a data set and you are going to test it on some another data set which is not there in the training but still your model is giving 95% of accuracy means your model is generalizing your model is summarizing and giving you the best and optimal result now guys moving on to our last feature that is adaptiveness you can take it as a survival of the fittest thing because if your model is not surviving the real time environments or the new problems then your model is not adaptive or good it will going to extend suppose there is a model which is built on traditional model and still giving you best and advanced solutions on the real time problems then your model is adaptive and is the optimal model you can have so guys clear your mind because we are going to go in the types of machine learning there are four different types of machine learning first we have is supervised or guided machine learning in the supervised or guided machine learning what it does is if there is a data set and having some values and you are labeling it as a specifying the value to the machine then it will recognize those data through the labels and giving you the optimal classification for example if you have the pictures of cats and dogs and you have to classify it then you will label it as cats and dogs then your machine will recognize those labels and classify and give you the optimal result so in supervised learning what we have is a supervised algorithm we have some labels and we are putting those labels to a data set and after this the machine easily recognizes and giving you the optimal results so guys moving on to our next type that is unsupervised or unguided learning in unsupervised or unguided learning what machine does is you are giving the data which is not labeled and after few trainings and making some errors the machine easily recognizes it so what we have is a unsupervised algorithm we have some unlabeled data and in those unlabeled data your machine is trying to find patterns after a few errors it will give you the optimal results moving on to our next type that is semi supervised learning in semi supervised learning the algorithm uses both unsupervised and supervised in combined form giving you the optimal result for example we have a semi supervised algorithm and we are trying to find out patterns from the data sets which are both labeled and unlabeled so this is how a semi supervised learning works moving on to our last type that is reinforcement learning the reinforcement learning you can understand in a way like when you are playing a game you make some mistake then learn from them then again make some mistake in a level learn from them and reach your goal this is how reinforcement learning works in a software the software is being trained multiple times making some errors and learning from them and giving you the optimal results this is the best example i can give you for the reinforcement learning that is the gaming system so guys what we have is a reinforcement algorithm and an environment we are taking some actions in that environment making some errors and getting some results then again making some errors and getting some results this is how a reinforcement model works in a machine learning so guys moving on to the examples of machine learning we have a voice recognition system and a image recognition system these both you are using in your phone in your laptop every day and machine learning is being used now guys you have learned so much now you must be thinking that how should i start my journey what skills i should have so these are the skills required to learn machine learning that is sql structured query language javascript c++ r programming for those who are moving with machine learning to the data scientist and python one of the best programming language for the machine learning 
and last but not the least if you are moving a bit deep down in the machine learning towards the deep learning then you need nlp or natural language processing these skills are required for the one who want to learn machine learning so guys moving on to the real life examples of machine learning i have that is google searches google searches uses your history track it down then giving you the prediction based on your histories for example let me show you so guys i came here at google now i'm going to type amazon and it's giving me that results which are already there in my history i must have searched before a month ago or two months ago then four months ago and all that history combined form is being predicted in here now amazon prime is there amazon videos are there so this is how a predictive model is working behind this google searches moving on to our next real life example guys that is instagram you swipe instagram every day every night so all that is based on your past data only if you are seeing some videos of cats then further swipes will be the cats only so this is how your history is being tracked down and watched by the instagram machine learning algorithms and giving you the results of the same so this is how a real feeder in instagram works moving on to our next example that is movie recommendation system on any movie watching website such as netflix or anime websites such as watch anime anycon etc so guys if i take you to any watch and show you the anime recommendation trending ones are based on the people's choices they are watching more based on your histories only if i watch any of these animes and i watch them regularly then the recommendations will show me the same so this is how a recommendation system works in any watch or you can say in netflix based on your choices in past data so guys moving on to the future of machine learning it will be using everywhere the advanced techniques in medical field architecture field electrical field and yes in the computer science field machine learning will be everywhere it will be revolutionizing the world so guys with this we have come to the end of this session i hope you like this video thanks for watching and happy learning i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning